Hi, I'm Carol Berkman and welcome to my YouTube channel. I do acrylic pour paintings on this channel. I do other paintings as well, but this YouTube channel is specifically for acrylic pour paintings. Please watch, you might find it very informative and fun. And if you like what you see, give me a like, share it, and subscribe, it's free. Hello, it's Carol Berglund with Carol's Art Creations. I'm going to do a pour today, and I hope you got to see my last pour. Wow, did that one turn out good. This is one that I did that I really do like, but I decided to sacrifice it. There's a few little issues with it. I put my finger in it and then tried to brush that out and match it up. From a distance, it looks pretty good, but you can definitely see it probably on camera there. And I do love the gold. Don't know how well the camera picks that up, but when you turn it just right, it really shimmers. But, you know, we have to sometimes reclaim some of our less than stellar work. Although it is beautiful, I'm just going to sacrifice this one today. And I think I have poured over it um, once before. So you don't want to pour over them more than about three times. And this should be my final use of paints. These are the same paints that I created, Eye of Nebula. So it's like Americana <clears throat> decor, metallic copper, squirt of burnt sienna, pouring, pouring medium is Floetrol, three parts flow, ugh, can't talk, three parts Floetrol, one part water. See when you're Southern, saying Floetrol. Well now I learned how to say that. And, thought it was Floetrol, but no. <laughs> this is a Christmas tree green that I had, and um, that was Apple Barrel Paints. But I kicked it up a little bit and added it to, uh, added just a dollop of the Americana Metallics 24 karat gold. And this one is just a paint by Craftman. Uh, might be ocean green or ocean breeze, but it's a nice turquoise color. And this is the Payne's Gray by Liquitex. So I really am kind of low on my colors. <clears throat> so what I want to do is maybe try to create some cloudiness. And one of the ways we do that is we put in what we call a satin enamel. The Americana decor has a satin enamel white. That's just beautiful. I couldn't find the white. The only one I could find was beige, but I mixed it with a white and I've got kind of like this eggshell color. <clears throat> but I do want to use it and I want to use it because the satin enamels creates this cloudiness effect. So I want to use this up and see if we can get some cloudiness and what kind of creation I can get using these paints. This is my third pour out of it, so it's pretty good. So I'm just going to put down a base coat. I am going to smear this out and while I do that I'm going to pause her because eh, tedious work. I'll come back when it's all ready to go. Okay, I'm back. So I've got my base coat down and that really helps because I don't have a whole lot of paint over here. And so I need everything to stretch out. And when that paint stretches out, I might have what we call negative space where half of this is uncovered. That's why it was important to get the base coat down. So let's see what we got. Now I spread this out, but it's uh, got some air bubbles. So I'm gonna torch it just to pop those bubbles and then I may try tilting it, see if it'll smooth out a little bit more. Pop 
some of those big bubbles. Don't know if you could pick that up on the camera or not. I'm just going to tilt this a bit. Try to get to a smoother look. It also lets me check to see how much paint I've got on my canvas, which will be important once we start with this pour. Okay, so I'm going to layer my cup up. And I think when I pour it out, I'll just pour it out and swirl it around and abstract it. Put a little bit of WD-40 in here. And all that is for is to get the paint to release out easier. Some people use it for cells. I don't think it gave me too much cells, but I did get some nice cell action on the last one. Now if you use WD-40 with silicone, silicone oil will definitely give you cells. Okay. I'll start with a little of the Payne's Gray. Probably only going to get two layers out of this. And then the copper with that burnt sienna. It's kind of sinking down in there. Hmm. And I think I'll put the green next to that. Turquoise. And back to my Payne's Gray. my natural stress reliever at the end of the day. I've kind of been cooped up a lot with self-quarantining and been cooped up at home alone a lot, which, well, I have been working as I work as a realtor. But today I'm not working and I'm just vegging out. It's always fun to do these projects. Alright, copper. time when I mix up green as one of my colors, I'm going to mix less of it. Not even equal to the other colors because it's like mean green. It really will eat up a painting. But that's alright. Because this is an experiment and if it goes wrong, then hey, I could scrape it right off. Turquoise is one color, so you use it in just about with any color scheme. It doesn't seem to clash and it really is beautiful. And I've yet to have it take over a painting the way green has. So 
I'm just going to pour in the middle and then I'm going to just move it and swirl it and make something abstract. You want some of that Payne's gray right in the center. Yeah. Yeah. That's a jumbled mess. I wonder what that'll give me. I'll just swirl it a little bit out, a little bit more. That just looked too jumbled together and going helter skelter. And when you first pour out your paint, they always tell you, you always hear, let it rest, let it sit. Just like when you cook something, especially meat off of a grill, if you bring it in, you let it set so the juices will reabsorb it. You won't lose too much juice when you cut it when it's just first out. So your meat will be more tender and juicy. So you let it rest. So I think what I will do is torch it. That heats it, helps any of the cells come up, and it pops air bubbles. I got a few little pop, pop, pop. Don't know if the camera caught it up, but you can see some cell right here. And then as we stretch it, those cells stretch out and they get quite, quite prominent in your painting. So I'm kind of curious and I want to pick it up and do it now, but I've learned to let it rest. So I'm going to give this a pause and I'm going to come back when we're ready to tilt. Okay, I'm back. And wow. Okay, this is clean, so I'm going to point with it because it's clean, no paint. Careful not to drip on your painting. Look at these cells. These are really popped up, more have popped up, they're really grown. So I definitely am going to get some kind of action here. Let's see what we get when we tilt this around, create our abstract design. Gloves back on. I've seen some ladies pick it up without gloves on, and I've done that too, but you know, for somebody who paints, I really hate the feeling in that nasty paint on my hands. But I do love the hobby. I actually started painting about four years ago. So I watched Bob Ross and I thought, wow, that looks so easy. The great artists always make it look so easy. And I, I picked it up. I bought all of his stuff. Actually, my husband presented me with a Christmas gift. And it was the easel and all the starter kit. So I got into painting. But then sometimes I just get blah. And feel uninspired and yeah you know, just to paint pictures I really need to look at them and feel some kind of inspiration to motivate me and then you kind of have to stay with it it's easy with oil because you can start and stop because the oil stays wet for so long but I converted over to acrylic and I did that because the oil was so messy in the cleanup. 
and you have to use chemicals. And then when you dump that, I worried about dumping that stuff into the water table. So I switched over to acrylics. It required a totally different methodology. And of course, and like everything else I tend to learn these days, I watch YouTube. So I don't know when or where I came across the acrylic, acrylic pouring, but I think I was just scanning one of the how-to paint channels and saw the acrylic pouring. And I looked at it and I thought, wow, that's awesome. For one thing, I like that you can just do it and get that instant gratification because you do have to work at painting landscapes. Even flowers can be hard to paint. Well, at least for me, because I still consider myself a novice. Okay, let me get this last corner. that down a minute. Hmm. Yeah, I keep hearing the artists talk about composition. And I think what is one of the things I do is keep blowing my composition with tilting so much. But to me it makes this great abstract. So I'm just looking at this thinking. Do I like this? Of course, there's some things I do love about it. I love this Payne's Gray with that pop of aqua and the copper. I like some of the little teeny tiny celly action right here. I'm hoping with it sitting on top of that satin enamels as it dries, some of that some of that satin enamel that's supposed to create the cells will start oozing up through. So I think what I'll do is, I think I'll torch it. There's another term I keep hearing about wrecking it. And that's when they take a stick and run through it or do something to, you know, <laughs> And they actually create another painting by doing that, but uh, it doesn't tend to work out that well for me. I think I wrecked one or two, but they stayed wrecked. They didn't get fixed. <laughs> think about that and as usual there are things I like things not so much nothing's ever truly perfect except for my painting on my last video <gasps> oh, it's drying I've been extra careful not to touch it not let anything happen to it if there's a little speck on it I'm gonna ignore it I'm not gonna try to get it off and ruin it and these are the things that we do as artists that actually wreck our paintings in a bad way. But yeah, I'm going to think about that. I'm going to pause you and come back and decide whether we're going to let this live or not. Talk to you later. Okay, I'm back. So, one of the things that I do to wreck my paintings is I flick some silicone oil. And that creates like 
thousands of cells. And you can mix this in with your paints and it creates it as it dries. I mean, it would be sealed over by now. You could use three-in-one oil, silicone. I don't like it because it smells. I went ahead and bought some silicone oil from the art store, from Michaels. It doesn't smell as bad. And so what I think I'm going to do is flick a little silicone oil over the top. I'm just putting a couple drops in my palm. I'll just put it on your finger, your thumb, and just flick it. And you won't see it at first. So. Pretty soon, this silicone oil will start eating through those top layers and maybe bring up some white or something just a little more vibrant, I think, is what it needs. I don't want to waste the last of this paint and scrape it off. I do like cells, and I like, I have one that's just like solenoid. But it's pretty cool. It looks like the bottom of an ocean floor. And I think that's what I named it. It's ocean floor. So this will change it. Let me pop this with a torch to heat it up and spread it quicker. Okay, so I am going to let this sit and come back and see how much I like it, if I like it, and then we'll see. And if I don't like it after the sales, the last resort is swiping it. I'm not a fan of swiping, but I have done them and I've gotten some beautiful paintings from them. So let's see how this looks. I wish I could have like an online voting so I could get a yay or nay. I'll have to work on that. Anyway, let's see what this comes up and how it looks. Talk to you later. Okay, I'm back. So this has got some wonderful cells from that silicone I flicked on it. I don't know. I do like more of this turquoise. I wish more of it was present. I don't know. I'm going to tilt this a little more and see what it looks like. And then, if all else fails, I will swipe it. So, let's do a little tilt and see what it looks like. Sorry, I'll try to keep this underneath the camera. It really doesn't look like it really wants to tilt. I guess I tilted off as much as possible. This little cell looks like it's got a ghost face. I don't know. Some things I like about it. Some things, meh. Like I like this. And I like some of these, like the aqua popping through. 
Well, I guess it's a little overstretched and smeary, but I don't know. Do I want to swipe? I can tell you that most of my swipes either end in a beautiful painting or I scrape in it, which I hate to waste the paint, but sometimes you just gotta scrape it. Here's my tool. You can take that and just take all the paint off. You can actually take it outside and hose it too under your hose pipe. But you want to do that quickly and then dry it off. So let's see. Hmm. You can also smear and make different patterns and stuff, but I'm afraid that'll really wreck it. I think I'm going to have to swipe it. It just is lacking something. So let's see if the swiping will help it out. The idea is I will take a paper towel and dampen it real good. And you catch it right in the black paint you're laying down. And you swipe it down and it does all those magic things. It just creates cells and makes everything pop. So sometimes it really can turn painting into a beauty. This one's okay, but I don't know. It just didn't speak to me. We artists, we have to love it. We have to like it. I don't always have to love it, but I don't like blase. I like to swipe with a paper towel and what I do is I took three long because I want to do it once and I, I don't like it where you have the lines in it. I mean they turn out okay but I've got one like that. So I just take it three wide and then I'm going to fold up the bottom and then I'm going to fold it again so I can just hold it and I'm going to dampen it drop it right in the edge of the black and then pull it straight back. And hopefully, this will go as planned. And that's the thing. Let go as planned. So I'm going to spritz the edge. Lift it, and this gives me like a little handle. I can hold some of this up. And I'm going to catch it. Not on the very, very end, but just before the edge. Lay it in there. Just before the edge. You got to lay in there. Okay. So far, so good. So I'll just slowly pull back. Swipe it down. Okay. So hopefully this will start to resell. And some of the colors will pop through. 
And see, this is there's always something about swiping. You pull too much off the edge right there. Bummer. This is the one thing I don't care about swiping. It's like there's always that one edge. Gently pull it down this way. Now let's see what we get. So let me torch it. Usually I'm seeing a lot more cells by now. Hmm. Well, I'm going to let this sit. Come back and see what we get. Hi, I'm back. Remember this guy? Well, when I came back, that black swipe didn't do a thing. It was ugly. It was ruined. And I was disgusted. So, I took this tool and I swiped it. I got it mostly cleaned up and I wiped it off and I took it out in my yard and I hosed it down. Voila! This painting has learned to, has survived to live another day. Uh, maybe I should keep it. Anyway, that's a good way to recover one when you regret having messed it up. Poor guy. Glad he made it. <laughs> So anyway, I'm going to get ready and mix up some colors, and I'm going to do another pour. So look for my other video coming up soon. Y'all take care. This is Carol Berklin with Carol's Art Creations. Please remember to like, subscribe, and share. Thank you. Bye-bye.